The Amalgamated Engineering Union was a major British trade union. It merged with the Electrical, Electronic, Telecommunications and Plumbing Union to form the Amalgamated Engineering and Electrical Union in 1992. History Amalgamated Society of Engineers The history of the union can be traced back to the formation of the journeyman steam engine, machine makers and millwrights friendly society, in 1826, popularly known as the «Old Mechanics». Its secretary, William Allen, and another leading figure in the union, William Newton, proposed forming a new union to bring together skilled workers from all engineering trades. They invited a large number of other unions to become part of a new amalgamated society of engineers, machinists, smiths, millwrights and pattern makers, which was soon shorted to the Amalgamated Society of Engineers ASE. Other than the old mechanics, the only notable union to join was the Smiths Benevolent, Sick and Burial Society. Together with various small, local unions, they brought 5,000 members into the ASE on its creation in 1851, Allen becoming its first general secretary. The ASE was one of the new model unions of the 1850s to 1870s. These unions, which also included the Iron Founders, Builders, and Carpenters Societies, rejected Chartism and the ideas of Robert Owen in favor of a more moderate policy based on prudence, respectability, and steady growth. Great importance was attached to the question of finance, as substantial funds would not only provide maintenance for members involved in strike action, but also help to deter the employers from attacking the organization. Since its members were skilled and relatively highly paid, it was possible for the ASE to charge contributions of one shilling a week and to build up a fund of unprecedented proportions. Initially, there were strict restrictions on membership, all must have completed an apprenticeship in their trade, and men who wore glasses were not permitted to join. The ASE was an immediate success, and within a year, membership had more than doubled to 11,000. However, in 1852, it agreed a ban on overtime and piecework. In retaliation, employers began an extended national lockouts, which greatly weakened the organization, an event repeated in 1896. But it maintained its preeminent position in the industry, and many local and regional unions joined. The union was invited to join the Federation of Engineering and Shipbuilding Trades when it was formed in 1891, but refused to do so. It also had a turbulent relationship with the Trades Union Congress not holding membership in 1905 or from 1907 to 1918. However, it was a founder member of the General Federation of Trade Unions It finally joined the Fest in 1905, hoping to persuade its other members to amalgamate with it. Six small unions did so, but the other refused, and the ASE again left the Fest in 1918. <laughs> Amalgamated Engineering Union In 1920, the ASE put out a fresh call for other unions to merge with it in a renamed Amalgamated Engineering Union Seventeen unions balloted their members on a possible merger, and nine voted in favor of amalgamation. Amalgamated Association of Brass Turners, Fitters, Finishers and Coppersmiths Amalgamated Instrument Makers Society Amalgamated Society of General Tool Makers, Engineers and Machinists East of Scotland Brass Founders Society London United Metal Turners, Fitters and Finishers Society North of England Brass Turners, Fitters and Finishers Society Steam Engine Makers Society United Kingdom Society of Amalgamated Smiths and Strikers United Machine Workers Association The resulting union had a membership of 450,000, about 300,000 coming from the ASE. The ASE had set up overseas branches in the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. In 1891, they had only 5,000 members between them, but by 1920 they had grown to 32,000 members. The union set up an Australasian council, and in 1906 a South African council, and the branches in those countries thereafter had a considerable degree of autonomy. They had their own full-time secretaries and organizers, and became the leading unions for engineers in those countries. However, in North America, the union failed to grow. 
American organizer Isaac Cowan prioritized strong links with the Union in Britain, and the Union there came to largely consist of British members who were temporarily working overseas. Many of them left in 1905 to join the International Workers of the World, and the ASE decided in 1920 to transfer the remaining branches to the International Association of Machinists. In 1922, employers, represented by the Engineering Employers Federation, launched an industry wide lockout in an attempt to reverse the gains made by the AEU during World War I and its aftermath. Exploiting the downturn in economic conditions in the engineering industry, they demanded the union forfeit control over overtime. The lockout lasted from the 11th of March to the 13th of June and involved 260,000 workers, 90,000 of them represented by the AEU. The lockout ended with the union conceding some of the employers' demands. The AEU continued to grow and absorb smaller unions. From 1926, it accepted members who had not completed an apprenticeship. In 1933, it had 168,000 members and 390,900 by the end of the decade. Its largest membership growth came during the Second World War when its all-male membership voted to admit women for the first time and 100,000 joined almost immediately, membership reaching 825,000 by 1943. However, the AEU also lost its overseas branches in Australia, New Zealand and South Africa, which became independent unions. The AEU merged with the Amalgamated Union of Foundry Workers on 1 January 1968 to form the Amalgamated Union of Engineering and Foundry Workers and with the Draftsmen and Allied Technicians Association and Constructional Engineering Union in 1971 to form the Amalgamated Union of Engineering Workers .The union was now organized on a federal basis, with four sections, Engineering, Foundry, Construction, and Technical, Administrative and Supervisory TAS. This approach was not a success, as the various sections fell into dispute with each other. In 1984, the engineering, foundry and construction sections were merged and in 1986 adopted the name Amalgamated Engineering Union once more, while the TAS remained separate and, in 1988, it became entirely independent of the union once more. Despite this series of amalgamations, declines in the number of workers in heavy industry saw membership drop from a peak of 1,483,400 in 1979, to 858,000 in 1986. The AEU became a mainstay of the moderate right in the trade union movement through the 1980s and 1990s, leading the manufacturing unions in 1989 to 1991 in a successful push for a shorter working week, but failing to merge with a number of unions, notably the Building Workers Union UCATT. In 1992 the AEU finally achieved a merger with the Electrical, Electronic, Telecommunications and Plumbing Union, EETPU, after a hundred years of off and on discussions. The new union took the name Amalgamated Engineering and Electrical Union. Topic: <inaudible> General Secretaries. ASE 1851 William Allen 1875 John Burnett 1886 Robert Austin 1891 John Anderson 1896, George Nickel Barnes 1909, Jenkin Jones 1912, Robert Young 1919, Tom Mann AEU 1921, Albert Smethurst 1933, Fred A. Smith 1943, Benjamin Gardner 1956, Cecil Hallett 1965, Jim Conway AEF, AUEW AEU 1988, Gavin Laird Chairman 1893, Alfred Sellex 1903, David Gardner 1910, Albert Taylor 1913, James Thomas Brownlee Topic: Presidents. 1920: James Thomas Brownlee. 1931: William Harold Hutchinson. 1933: John C. Little. 1939: Jack Tanner. 
1953, Robert Openshaw 1956, William Caron 1968, Hugh Scanlon 1978, Terry Duffy 1986, Bill Jordan <laughs>